Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. I'm out in the greenhouse today because I want to do a little bit of planting. If you recall from a video a few weeks ago, I planted up a bunch of native plant seeds that I had uh, stratified and scarified in various ways. I have some out here that I'm doing kind of a pseudo winter planting, winter sowing with. And then I have some that I have growing in the house. One of the things that I had started in that video was the purple prairie clover. And it needed to be hot scarified and then cold stratified. And so it's just been sitting, the seeds have been sitting in some damp toweling in my refrigerator. And so I need to plant them up now. It was supposed to be 10 days, I believe. And uh, I'm actually one day off of that. Today's March 16th and this was supposed to come out March 17th. But I'm busy the next few days. I'm gonna be doing some planting today anyways. So I thought it was better to do it a day early than like a bunch of days late and forget about them. So I'm gonna do these up, get them planted in some soil and I'll take them back in the house. I already have some out here in my winter sowing kind of setup that I have here. And then I'm also going to be planting some native grass. So I'm gonna be planting some little blue stem grass. I picked up seeds for that from TT Seeds this uh, winter and I thought it would be fun to try and get some going in my, my yard this year and see how that goes and I'll go from there to see how much I want to spread it out. But it's supposed to be a good clump forming grass, about two to three feet tall and wide. And it has beautiful plumes on it in late, mid to late summer. And then it turns actually, it's, it's a beautiful blue green through most of the season. And then in fall, when the cool nights start to hit, it turns like kind of a bronzy red mahogany kind of color. Uh, so, so I thought that would be really nice to have in the yard. And being that it's not the big blue stem, which can get like five to eight feet tall, I think it'll be easier to pop into some areas of my yard. And when we get our heavy snow cover, like we do some years, like you can see behind me, we've had this year, it won't get, it won't look as bad, I think, when it starts to get knocked down, it'll get covered a little more quickly than the blue stem or the, the big stem would. So that's why I went with the little blue stem. And I'm hoping that it works out really well because I really like to incorporate the natives in my yard. Native plants are a great thing to have in your landscape, in my opinion anyways, and I think a lot of people would agree, because they are the plants that your native pollinators and animals and creatures and things grew up with and evolved with in your local ecosystem. And so those are the things that are best designed to, to provide for those plants as far as food and shelter goes. So that's why I try hard to incorporate more and more natives every year into my landscape. And I think from reading the comments that a lot of you are trying to do that too. So I thought I would just show you a couple of books that I have. So these are two books that I like to go back and look at and read. They're not uh, resource books in the way that you would think you're just gonna look up a plant and see all the cultural information and growing requirements and things for those plants. These are both written in a very kind of story-like way. They're real true accounts of how these plants grow and they show good situations where they're growing and good examples of that. And I think these both do a nice job of that. So they're like easy to read and sit down and enjoy and read over and over again. And every time I read them, I find new little tidbits in them. I purchased this off of Amazon I'm not sure it's still available on this. I actually picked, purchased at a secondhand store, but if I can find links, I'll pop links in the description down below, or you might be able to, they are older books, but you might be able to still find them in a, a book retailer. Or like I said, always look when the, you're at the secondhand store, you find great gardening books at the secondhand store. This one is Native Plants for the Short Season Yard. And this is by Lyndon Penner. Uh, this one is very specific to the Canadian prairies and it has a lot of wonderful accounts. He's traveled around, he's experienced a lot of the prairies firsthand and has a lot of experience in not only using the native plants in his own yard, but in designing yards for clients and friends and helping them with that as well. So he really knows which native plants work well in a home garden and which ones he'll say just don't and he's honest about it. And I like that and I appreciate that. This book is Grow Wild and it's by Lorraine Johnson and it's Native Plant Gardening in Canada. So again, more specific to Canada. This is just native plants in general. It's not just prairies, but there's a good section on the prairies in here. And it goes over a lot of different plants. It talks about where they would grow well 
and it has a lot of good information but like I said it's it's mixed in with uh, you know whole stories about the plants and her experience with them. The author went and visited a lot of different um, people's gardens, home gardens, to get information for this book. There's lots of great photos in it and stories about those people and their gardens in it as well. And I, I think that's always nice to see. So, I think these are two good good books if you're looking for kind of n light reading that's also going to teach you a lot about native plants. I think these are books that are worth. Uh, worth purchasing or borrowing from your library. So now that we've discussed the, the books, let's get some seeds going into the soil here. Okay, so let's start with the purple prairie clover. Like I said, I hot scarified these seeds and then uh, cold stratified them. So I'll put a link to that video if you're interested in what that all means and how I did it. But here they are, they're just on a coffee filter. And they're looking really good, so. Now these are just supposed to be sown just slightly below the soil surface and uh, I didn't actually bring out any soil with me so I'm just going to scrape a little bit back on a few cells and then I'll just use that to, to go over it afterwards. And I'm going to put a few in each cell here and just kind of sprinkle them in in clumps. So just spread a few out onto the tray there. Hopefully you can see all those little kind of yellow dots there. That's the little clumps. And I'm just going to take a little bit of soil and just, just cover them a little bit and pat it down. So that's all I'm going to do for all of these cells here. And, I'll, and then we'll move on to the, the little blue stem. If you're curious about how my, um, my native seeds that I planted there a couple weeks ago are doing, I have the uh, coneflower sprouted almost immediately. I think it was the next day or the day after it was sprouted. And the golden aster, I believe, sprouted a few days later maybe within a week. So they're both up. Nothing else has sprouted yet, but I'll keep an eye on them and they're all just sitting on my grow shelf inside. It's still getting quite cold. And in fact, it's, it's supposed to be negative 20 tonight. Uh, so the things that are out here, even in the greenhouse, it's not heated in here. It's, they're not, um, they're not germinating and growing yet. And I don't expect they will for at least a few more weeks once we start to get some warmer weather and it's not getting quite so cold at night. That's when I might see some action on those. It's just a beautiful day. It was, so, it was forecast to snow all day today and somehow it's sunny and warm. It's over 10 degrees here in the greenhouse absolutely gorgeous which is nice we had a snowstorm on the weekend so it's nice to have this hot sun shining in and melting some of that snow away the snow's good it's good moisture but this time of year I'm ready for it to be gone so instead of the soil you could use uh, vermiculite to cover up your seeds especially when they just want to be covered lightly or you can sprinkle vermiculite on top if you're concerned about um, any sort of algae growth or problems like that occurring. It's helpful in controlling the moisture at the top of your, your seed containers. There, so I sowed these quite thickly as I'm sure you could see and hopefully I get some germination and I'm okay with the clover coming up several in each little cell here. I think that'll be fine for how clover grows. I've never grown it before, but from what I've seen, I think that'll be all right. If not, I'll just divide it out. So just giving this tray a good spray down here, it'll help get the seeds contacting the soil really well and moisten the soil because I actually did this tray up a few weeks ago and it's just been sitting with 
the lid on waiting for me to plant them. So I'm gonna make sure there's good moisture in there. I was surprised it actually was still quite moist in there. And always good not to forget the tag. Pop that in there. And I will be using a humidity dome on this tray to help keep the humidity in and it'll help hold some heat around the seeds. And this will just go on my shelf with my other plants that I'm growing indoors. I'm just planting them out here for right now. Set those out of the way. And now for the uh, little blue stem. I'm really excited to grow this. Grasses are so beautiful in the landscape and it's nice when you can have something that's a native plant as well. So I'm hoping these work out really well. I've seen some accounts where some people say that the seeds can spread a little bit in your yard. And so I think I'll experiment with cutting some seed heads off and leaving a few on. And we'll just see if I start to get a lot of seedlings coming up from those few seed heads, I'll know to cut them all off. If I'm not seeing any, I'll leave a few more the next year and we'll just go from there and see what happens. That's what I like to do with plants that uh, are said to sometimes spread aggressively by seed. This didn't, uh, the accounts I read didn't say it was aggressive, but it did say that it could be an issue. So I'm gonna get these seeds out here. Yeah, so these just wanna be covered lightly as well. Like, like you would expect grass seed to look like, hey? And the fluffy little heads. I think what I'm gonna do, because I did, I just prepped these pots inside and brought them out. So I think I'm just gonna take little clump off of each of these. Level them back out. And then I can just put my seeds on top and then I'll have some soil here that I can cover them up with just lightly. So I'm gonna put a few seeds in each a lot of plants, if they have a lot of seeds that disperse, then sometimes that means that you're not getting the best germination. I, when companies sell their seeds, I think they have to do germination tests, but I don't know. So just put a few in and I can always thin them out later. So do you grow native plants in your yard? Uh, what about native grasses? Let me know in the comments down below what your experience has been. If you like to grow these types of things or these two plants in particular, share your, your knowledge with all of those that care to go down to the comments and have a look. It's always good when we can learn from each other. So it says to cover lightly, so I'm just gonna try and get a fine little sprinkling on here. Just, just so I can't see the, the seeds anymore. So I'll give those a good spray as well. So all of my other native plants that I've started this year, I've done a sowing that goes in my house and a sowing that stays out in my greenhouse just to see how they would come up in the different situations. But for the blue stem, I only brought out a container to do for in the house. So I, I think that's that's fine. I don't need to do it with everything anyways, but uh, I'll keep you up to date on what's happening with the rest of my natives as they come up. And hopefully we can get a nice selection of native plants growing for in my yard here this summer. So that's two more native plantings that I have done for this summer. I will put a humidity dome over this tray as well. And it'll also go on my grow shelf under lights in my house. I don't believe either of these need light to germinate, but that's where I keep all my seedlings that I have inside. And then it's easy to keep track of them and know when I need to do anything with them. I hope you enjoyed seeing a few more native plants getting sown in my Saskatchewan Canada garden here. And I'll keep you up to date on what's happening with those that are out here in my greenhouse, as well as the ones inside. I hope you're having some beautiful sunny weather like I am, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.